we're going to hear today from a variety of leaders who are trying to understand what's the process underway inside a city, which is not easy to do because we have imperfect data. We often have very little data. Uh, we have imperfect leaders, although I think uh, Mayor Littlefield and Mayor Osborne here are exceptions, but most other mayors are imperfect. We have uh, <laughs> Im imperfect elected officials and appointed officials and all the rest of us in the imperfection realm. But Ken, who's joining us here from his base in the Detroit area, is one of those people who's really asking very tough questions and looking for empirical data. And uh, he has a PhD after his name, so I guess they, they give that to people who really look at the data and don't just talk about ideas. They bring it to the realm of the practical and the real. Um, Ken is going to give us a picture, here we are in the Denver metro region, the greater metro agglomeration as the urban, urbanists call it, and we thought it would be a good idea to get back into the place where we are to figure out what's happening with driving and mobility and the urban growth pattern in the city of Denver. So Ken, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Gordon. Um, I note that yesterday afternoon, late in the day, you introduced one of the speakers saying, uh, I always try and save the best for last. And in light of that, I appreciate you scheduling me as the first speaker today. <laughs> I'm Ken Laberto. I uh, work for Toyota Research Institute in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And my presentation is called, What's Driving the Driving in Denver? First, we just want to acknowledge my great uh, partners at MIT, Alan Berger and Case Brown. Um, they do really excellent work. So let me know if any of this sounds familiar. The era of urban fuel, I'm sorry, the era of abundant fuel has ended for good. The romance of Americans with their car, it's ending. Public transportation is about to see a huge revival. One occupant per car just simply is not acceptable. Middle class is going to move back to the city and eschew their cars. If that all sounds familiar, that's because you probably remember it from the 1973 December issue of Time magazine. <laughs> and that was written during a very uh, deep recession, high oil prices, uh, and a lot of predictions that turned out to not be very accurate. So, the question then is, are we in the same bust boom pattern? Let's try and take a look. This is where we live today. Um, you can see a lot of open space to the, to the west. Uh, and if we were to pick the point, which would be the, the mean location of all of the uh, US population from 1790, we see it, it uh, is moving south and west uh, without fail. And to look at it a little bit more detail, uh, these are census data. Uh, you can see just how much growth is expected in the south and west. Uh, in fact, I'd point out that uh, in the state of Texas, there's expected to be as many new residents in 2030 in the state of Texas as in the Midwest and Northeast combined. And the same is true for Florida. Same is true for California. Here's a histogram of where we lived in 2000, basically showing uh, you know, th that this many millions of people lived in an area that has about 100 people per square kilometer and so forth. And this over here on the right side is the trend line since 1960. The rural and uh, urban has stayed about the same. All the growth has been taking place in the suburbs. So we've done a, a pretty detailed case study um, using data from the Denver metro region. And this is what we saw the population was doing uh, between 1990 and 2000. You can see that we've broken it up between the 0 0.5 miles, the 5 to 10 miles, and the 10 to 20 miles. And it's only that outer ring that has grown in that, that decade. Uh, and in, in fact, at, in 2000, it was almost as many people living there as the near suburbs. Three of the 50 largest 
growing uh, counties in the U.S. are in Denver, the Denver metro area. This is a, a depiction of uh, the Denver Regional Council of Governments, Dr. Cog data. Um, this is where they're predicting new residents in the 2035 range. Uh, you can see that there, it's very highly correlated to uh, highway access. It doesn't show, I think, what is this, 76? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, but you can pretty much figure out where it is, where the orange dots are. And this, this picture right here is showing you a view from the air, you know, about 30 miles out, brand new community. I'm sorry. This is the, where the new jobs are expected to be. Uh, there is some in the downtown region, but even more so in the uh, tech corridor here, which is sh shown in the picture, and this Broomfield area, which many of you drove past on your way out here. Uh, so I think, th I look at this and it looks like the commute in uh, Denver is still gonna be very uh, highly correlated with highway driving. This is a, a flatter depiction of the same data. Uh, basically shows that, you know, what fraction of the jobs are in the downtown area, the three to 10 mile range and the 10 to 35 mile range. And uh, already we're, we're about the point where that's where the majority of the jobs are. Just by means of comparison, this is the Atlanta uh, version of the same data and uh, their trend is same, uh, they're just further along. This is a complicated graph, I'll, I'll try and exp but I think it's important to, to understand. Uh, and it's, it's a little stale, this is 1997 data, but, but I uh, look forward to getting updated data on this. But, but basically what they've done is they've taken the metro region, broken it up into segments, and we'll blow up this, this bottom left one here. And basically what they've done is they, they are indicating how many trips either start or end in the green areas and how many of them start or end in one of these other areas. And so the first thing to, to point out is that it's not the case that everyone is just driving from their homes to the downtown area where all the employment and shopping and, and so forth. Uh, the second thing to observe is that it's kind of going everywhere. It's, uh, there's a lot of geographic diversity in where people drive, or travel, I should say. Um, Denver commute is predominantly um, by car, mostly by driving alone. Um, this is a, a quick comparison. I didn't, I, in the uh, slide deck, which I think will be available, uh, I include the version for Atlanta, but I'll just quickly summarize here. It shows that you know, basically Denver, I'm sorry, uh, Atlanta is twice as big and growing at twice the rate of Atlanta. But um, both of them, you will see a lot of edge growth. Um, over 43% of the jobs um, are at least 10 miles from the city center. Uh, very little mass transit, shown right here. Uh, and in Atlanta, they've actually already spread well past their beltway. So, so uh, they've essentially already overridden uh, the available highways there. Sorry. This graphic here, basically, this is, this is national data. Um, the green line basically shows the U.S. population growth since 1960. The brown line is showing the price of a gallon of gas once you adjust it uh, by the consumer price index. Interestingly, although it does bounce around, it's never greater or less than 50% of what it was in 1960. The pink line is showing um, uh, the growth in the U.S. economy, and the blue line is showing the uh, vehicle miles traveled. Uh, and I was really struck the first time I saw this. It's not just that we have more people going to work and school and shopping. If so, you would expect the blue line to track the green line. It seems like there's something more going on there. And yes, there is a divergence here in the last, um, you know, most of our data b runs out right when all the interesting things start happening in 2008. <laughs> and so there's a lot of questions about what's gonna happen next. Um, honestly, uh, well, I'll, I'll mention that in, in the next slide, uh, what I think about that. But uh, what you see is 
this new emerging view of the U.S. driver. Uh, the U.S. driver drives more as his wealth increases, lives in the suburbs, works in the suburbs, drives between suburbs, commutes alone by car, commute distances are increasing, drives an increasing fraction of miles on nonstop roads, despite the lower price, mostly doesn't use mass transit unless it provides a significant convenience uh, or time advantage, and finally, is likely to live in the South and West where all of these trends are the strongest. So here's my intentionally provocative slide. You know, given this view, um, where should we as a transportation community be focusing our efforts in the U.S.? Should it be trying to make mass transit more successful by uh, attacking the last mile problem? Um, or is it uh, acknowledging that the highways are here, they're very popular, that's where most of the driving is taking place, and finding more efficient, safer, more comfortable ways uh, to operate those. So finally, what is driving the driving in Denver? I don't know. <laughs> this data shows what's happening, all right? It doesn't say why it's happening. I, I can show correlation all I want. I'm not proving causation. We all know that. And of course, the, the most, uh, the, most of the public data kind of runs out when all the interesting things happen, when it all fell apart in 2008. So right now, we are certainly in a trough. Um, we've been here before. I think it's interesting to, we're all very interested in seeing what happens in the future. Um, but yet, these are long-standing trends, and they should definitely be part of the conversation. Thank you very much.